So how was your Christmas and New Year's and all that fun stuff? How was your week? It, it was good. It was good. It was busy. I'm glad we're done. <laughs> yeah. That is where I'm at. So. Oh, Valina's the console. Oh, yeah, that's right, because you guys have the orb. You won't give her both. Correct. Hmm. Here's the hoping that the stream doesn't freaking crash like last week. Yeah. That was such That'd a be good. show. It's always a good thing. Hey, we're live. Happy New Year. Happy Annika. We all yelled Jumanji instead of Happy New Year, hoping the game would end. Is that what we did? The only problem is that moves us back to 2020, doesn't it? You know, I have never watched Jumanji. Seriously? <laughs> it's a good movie, dude. Good I've movie. never watched any of them. Next time you're hanging out with your nieces, watch it. It's a fun movie. Sure. It's it's one of those movies that I always was like, yeah, I could watch this. Yeah. I am one episode, actually I should say we are, one episode away from being done with Wheel of Time. Season one. Oh yeah? I have, I have to start that yet. It is good. It is good. It it. The first episode opens up, it's uh, just flipping amazing. Like, watching it, I... The combat in there, I'm, I, th I think of a D&D &D party where you have a caster needing time to cast spells and the fighter fighting around the caster giving them time to cast the spells and whatnot. It mm -hmm. just it's probably the most uh D and D esque um party dynamic I've seen in a in a fantasy movie where where they're actually functioning as a party. And by party I mean two people, but yeah. still. Um it's there where you don't typically see it. You see everyone doing their own thing in most fantasy movies. Like it was Aragon yeah, fighting. Yeah, they always split up and, and they yeah. always go into their two separate parts. Yep. And you see Legolas get to be a badass, but he's all over the fucking battlefield and he's not... And no one's protecting Gandalf. He's just a badass fighting on his own against hundreds. Yeah. So I kind of like the idea of them fighting using teamwork. We're a party. We like each other. Let's be a team. <laughs> so yeah, you would think that there would be more of that in general. But I mean, even I, I suppose they took it from the books, you know. And the yeah. Did you read the books? Yes, I did. Yeah, you've read them all. Not I, not the Wheel of Time, the the Lord of the Rings. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I suppose. My brother and my dad have both read all of the Wheel of Time. My my younger brother Pat is obsessed. He, like yeah. Nice. I'm not obsessed with it. I had a hard time reading it. I tried reading the book like three or four times, and I could never get through beyond the prologue. Oh, really? Then I read a I read a thing the other day. <laughs> Someone said if you're going to read the Wheel of Time, skip the prologue in the first book. <laughs> I was like, oh, well, shit, that would have been helpful. <laughs> I finally listened to it on an audio book and was able to um, read through the first book and I stopped midway through the second. So I think that is going to be... That's a 14-book series, right? It's long, yeah. It's, I think it's 14 books and the last three were written by Brandon Sanderson. So um, I think that may be what I try and do this year, <laughs> reading-wise slash listening. Just tackle the wheel of time. Yeah, I've considered going to book on tape for it. Audible's amazing. By, if you don't have Audible, Audible is so damn book good. Book on tape, because I'm old. 
Yeah, Audible. Yeah, That's what I meant. Right, yeah. Audiobooks. They're yeah. significantly cheaper than they, when they were books on tape. <laughs> right. Primarily because you don't have to pay for materials now. I'd like to think that's the excuse, but well. honestly, the materials tapes were made out of were probably pretty cheap. Mm -hmm. No, I do, I do like Audible. I actually thought about uh, <coughs> doing my books. I mean, I have the setup. I have the microphone. I have the recording software. I mm -hmm. can just read my own books and put it on. Because I think you can do the same with Audible as you do with like how I self-publish. Oh, yeah. Amazon. The LibriVox is a... Um, uh, all, any book in the public domain, LibriVox looks for people to do the reading of the books. The reading of I've the thought books? about... I've thought about trying to do that, like do chapters at a time on YouTube videos or something like that. Or do Love a podcast-ish thing like that. Good morning, Ryan Kukta. You know, that's not a terrible idea. Chapters is a YouTube video? There's a lot of people that use YouTube for their audio now. Well, I mean, that, I could just so. do it on Twitch. I could just read my book oh, yeah. on Twitch. And yep. then pull the audio. However, I get. <sighs> yeah, I mean, there's ways I could do it. If I was going to do it and just put it out as an audio book, I think the best way would be to just sit down and do it without an audience because then you're not getting distracted. Yeah. So I don't want I mean, if you're reading, to... anyways, you're. Yeah. You're reading. <clears throat> I've been listening to uh, Kith and Kin, the. Um, critical role book that they have um, Robbie Damon reading that and then Liam O'Brien and Laura Bailey do the voices of their characters Yeah, that, that's that been actually pretty cool to listen to I don't listen to books much when I'm on vacation though <laughs> only when I'm in the car <laughs> yeah this. I don't do a lot of listening usually it's just music or podcasts unless I am a uh the only time I really do it is when I'm doing, like, outside yard work or garage work. Yeah. What's up, Cooch? What's going on, gentlemen? So far, 2022 been good to you? The one day? Yep, I, I, I was saying to Norm, I, I've already done one of my resolutions for the year. Was to, I, well, last year one of my resolutions for 2021 was to write a book. I never even started writing. And then I stopped drawing, which was one of my resolutions in 2019 was to draw, to get back into drawing and draw more. So I didn't draw at all in 2021. Oh, yeah, it was one of my 2020 resolutions was to draw more. You're trying to tap into your creative side. Yeah, exactly. And so I failed miserably last year. So my, one of my resolutions this year is just to create more, write and draw. And yesterday I grabbed a writing prompt and dropped 300 words on a document. So nice work, very, man. very happy about Art. that and get to drawing again some more here. Awesome, dude. So, you know, something well, that would be an easy start for you as well is just to go back to one of your previous D&D &D, um, oh, yeah. campaigns I, that you've DM'd and just from memory start from the beginning and just start writing it all down i have actually started doing that i started doing that with the campaign that we did ryan the homebrew campaign my first big one i've actually i have a prologue to that book written already and it's it's kind of cool because it was it was um basically my take on a character's backstory on rick's character's backstory and I took his backstory and wrote a prologue to the whole thing. And that's and I may actually do that, Norm. That may be... Maybe I put that whole thing in book form. God, that would be so fun then to self-publish that and hand a copy to each one of the members of the... Yeah. <laughs> well, i tell you what would be cool. I mean, most of the like big events are documented pretty well. Mm -hmm. You could embellish, you could play off of that, but... Um, Dave's wife did an awesome job. Yeah. Of, uh, 
documenting everything. Yeah, grab grab all her notes. I have all my notes. I have the things I thought might happen versus the things that did actually happen. And there are times where I was like, ooh, well, that didn't go the way I expected. <laughs> where there could have been a cooler story moment, possibly. But then there are plenty of times where you guys just grabbed the ball and made the shit so much cooler than I ever thought it would be. I mean, you're going to have to make this a trilogy then if you go that route. That's true. Yeah. There's a genius. Good morning. Hey, genius, I updated my phone to 15.2. My car audio works again. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. I was so happy when you said that. I'm like, oh, I got to try that. And I got in my car and plugged it in. I'm like, yes, it works again. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, you were having the Apple audio. Yeah, 15.1 Borked. 15.1 Borked Auxiliary yep. um, audio stuff. Yep. For whatever reason, yeah, 15 you, you had to it. go back and do the old way, didn't you? Mm -hmm. you? You had to, yeah. Yeah, which sucked. It was what it was, though. Yeah, if it was anything other than like a headset, mm -hmm. not even a headset, if it was more than just audio, it like if it was trying to read any information or take in uh, vocal information or whatever, it, it wasn't working. I need more coffee, and then I'll be ready to go. I should probably pee while I'm up, too. Yes. Because yes, that's a good idea. And I'll be right back. So what do you guys know? Um, I don't have anything for today. I had a... For Christmas, we got this Oculus system. And I've been obsessed with it. So playing a lot of Beat Saber and then um, this game called Demio where you're basically it's a, like a strategic game where you you know move your guy a certain amount of tiles and stuff like that. But it's all like VR so you can spin the board and like look at it from all angles and stuff like that. It's real fun. Nice. How's that Beat Saber treating you? I hear that's uh, quite quite the workout. I mean, there's another one that uh, my wife wanted to download called Supernatural that is actually a workout, and that one hurts because, like, when you hit up, you've got to, like, stretch your arm all the way up, and so I feel it now. Like, stuff I haven't used in a while. Like that first time golfing for the year. Right. And that's not a joke. Like, I feel it in the area of my back that, you know, causes you to reach. And, like, it's exactly the same feeling. Nice. Yeah. That's cool. I have to uh, highly recommend uh, it's a game by the um, Exploding Kittens company uh, called Poetry for Neanderthals. It's hilarious. Uh, basically, it's kind of like the, the uh, guess the word charades taboo kind of thing. Except you can only use one syllable words because you're a caveman. So you have to explain the whole thing without using two syllables. Mm. Then you end up talking like that for the rest of the day. <laughs> Sounds like some fun moments. Mm -hmm. And they give you an inflatable club to hit the people over the head with that uh, break the rules. I'm sure that does not get out of hand at all. <laughs> no, fun to play with the mother-in-law, that's for sure. <laughs> I can imagine. So what you guys do for New Year's, just kind of hang out and watch the watch the balls drop? Yeah, pretty much. Low Went low over key. to uh, Cousin Derek's house and played with a baby and a dog all night long. Nice. How was how Derek? How was Cousin Derek? Killing it. Bought a house. Beautiful house. It's nice. Um, just having a good time. I think the last time I saw him probably would have been when Grandpa D died. No. I think I take that back. I think I saw him at Costco after that at some point. But yeah, I, I have not seen. I haven't seen that kid in a while. 
Yeah. Kid. Adult. And his wife are both doing great. So they're like uh, in that stage right now where like he went back to work and she was off so that, you know, maternity leave and then he's going to be on paternity leave shortly. So then he goes back to work. So Very nice. But, uh, it's great. Excellent. That's good to know. So, when we do get uh, going after the recap, uh, some of the stuff that I'd mentioned, if you want to um, discuss what you might have talked to Jacob about as far as strategy or uh, um, leadership type stuff, like stuff that he would have tried to get from you guys over those 10, 12, 15 days, just... Just general terms is fine. Yeah, let's see. This should be all right. So. All right. Yeah, I, th- to be honest, Aranon would not have interacted with him much other than to observe. So. Right. And that, that that's where Jacob's probably confused about the leadership in the group because it seems like Aranon might be the leader, but he doesn't talk to me. So. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that's fair. And I don't, we don't necessarily have a leader. A leader. Right, right. that's what Jacob's trying to figure out. So uh, we can talk about that once we... uh, Jacob may come to the realization that this group needs a leader. (laughs) (laughs) We have no direction, and now we need one direction. That's the last thing we need. Nah, more one direction. You light up my life like no. We literally need. It is literally. Hello, everybody. Here's your lesson in K-pop. Now, I am your host and DM for this episode of Two Nerds, One Quest. God, I'm all thrown off now because you caught me in the middle of describing K-pop shit. I'm your host and DM, JC Timmer. <laughs> Here with these three nerds, because math is hard. Let's see if we can write this train, get it back on track. Good luck. Yeah, that man right there pointing at me, catching me off guard, needing a K-pop lesson is one. Tom M. Norman playing Aaron on. How you doing this morning, bud? Yes, John, I am fine. Please enlighten me about the words of K-pop and how it's supposed to matter in my life. I didn't say it was supposed to matter. I'm saying your thought process at that, like it being a contrived music group. Uh-huh. That's what K-pop is. They're not groups. They're, they are Marketing properties. Mar- yes, I know. They're properties. They have age definitions that at, at a certain age, they get out of the group, and then they bring in another person. Is this like I a Menudo think, thing? Yeah, kind, uh, I don't know. Is Menudo like that? I don't remember what Menudo was like. <laughs> anyway. it's, it's not for me. It's not my deal. The man shaking his head and eating peanuts. Over there is one, Ryan. Crix is cooked. They're just kind of nodding along. How are you doing this morning, bud? Great. Holiday Chex Mix. It's the breakfast of champions. Ooh, Holiday Chex Mix. That sounds that sounds delicious. It literally has cereal in it. So <laughs> It does. It's fair okay. game for breakfast. <laughs> what is Holiday Chex? What is involved with Holiday Chex Mix? I mean, so Chex Mix is typically only made around the holidays. Otherwise, it becomes too normalized, and it's not special anymore. So, yeah. Chex Mix, made around the holidays, is extra special, and it becomes holiday Chex Mix. Yeah. It's, it's Chex Mix my, that you my, don't my, buy I in guess, a bag. My, that, and that's my fault for asking. Um, I actually meant, like, what is the flavor? Oh, so, um, <laughs> while so I'm into that. this, I just want to say, typically... 
Um, it involves a base of Crispix, and then some pretzels, nuts, and uh, a couple other minor things, mostly cashews. But uh, because of the shortage of Crispix in your world, I don't know if you're fam you're aware of this. It contains now rice and corn checks, which I do not prefer. So I'm just advocating for the unions of the world to get back to making Crispix as much as possible. <laughs> and for those in charge of these unions, relent. Relent now. I need Crispix in my I deck. mean, it's, it's possible that all that is sitting in a boat somewhere that can't make it to port. And, and Plant Lamp is asking the important questions. What flavor are your nuts? <laughs> <laughs> Honey <Extra> roasted. Salty. <laughs> Delicious, <laughs> baby. Try them. All right, so we got extra salty and honey nut. Any other people want to? <laughs> honey roasted, Rick... not I... honey nut. I'm not a Cheerio. I assumed, <laughs> I assumed Kucha's would be like the bold flavor. Yeah, probably. <laughs> The last voice you hear chiming in on this conversation is one Jeff. Jacob? Jingleheimer Schmidt? Williams? <laughs> yeah, it's all kinds of confusing. Good morning, everyone. Happy New Year. Hoping for a good 2022. And Tom, I'm going to tell you, and, and some people may get this. I know Tom definitely will. This is the most giant bomb-esque version of our show we've done, I think. Start the first 10 minutes is about nothing related to the show. <laughs> the only way it would be more giant bombish is if somebody had to explain to me what what ch what Chris picks were. Like a Dan yeah, Riker exactly. question. Mm. Yep. Yep. Exactly. Yep. And Just also for the rest and... of the followers to check in by 8:30, so. Yeah. And yeah, I mean a Chris picks checks mix is going to throw me off. There's six sides not four. I don't get it. And I I'd like to uh <laughs> Uh, give some props to Scoot and Jack here real quick for saying Crixis needs this Chris mix. Oh, show title. That's show title. That's even if, I mean, we're in show. I've done the intro. Mm -hmm. Yep, Scoot <laughs> and Jack throw that in there as a show title. <laughs> he isn't wrong. I like that one. Next. Oh, man. Oh, oh, is it recap time? Anywho, yeah. We should, we should probably I, I, the show I think we on. could roll. Roll a recap here at this point. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, so we started in the evening at the Belching Dragon with Valine begging Doc to go along because she's the only, or he's the only one she seemed to trust. Uh, coming from Valine, Doc really wasn't moved much. Um, and Ellie begging Doc to stay wasn't necessarily needed, but. Uh, you guys are trying to throw me off now. <laughs> uh, additional uh, many conversations were had, including uh, invitation for Jacob to join the crew on the next adventure, and divvying up Doc's equipment. I'm gonna, I'm gonna. All right, fine. Nice. Oh man, I hope I hope you guys aren't just all listening on the podcast. We got some pretty entertaining. <laughs> Did that glove just flip me off? <laughs> Yep. <clears throat> so, uh, uh, divvying up Doc's equipment so that everyone was well equipped for the morning. The morning, I uh, got some food bundles. Uh, Doc seeing the sunrise over the lake is at peace. I'm not even looking at the camera anymore. Um, uh, they started the travel, and as they left town, Jacob's traveling companion showed itself as a as a, a medium-sized drake that was following them and joined them for the travel time. I can see out of the corner of my eye, you guys are still being... <laughs> Keep reading. Keep going. <clears throat> uh, so, uh, as as uh, Aranon uh, finally learned that week a week is 10 days long here, called a 10-day, uh, we traveled for approximately... A 10 day and a half. Uh, the travel was good. There was some some weather, but nothing too serious. Uh, we had a number of fireside chats, which uh, go check out our Discord, and you can see all the cool, uh, some of the cool stuff that we talked about. Um, there was some loot playing. There was some harp learning. There was uh, some reading of monks for dummies. 
Uh, eventually, there was a flower that was picked, <laughs> which allowed Crixus's passenger to finally be at peace and leave our uh, our little band. And uh, as uh, as we ended the show last time, the we were in sight of the glacier, and there was a line of humanoids uh, in front of us. And uh, we could not tell exactly what they, what or who they were, or why they were there. Um, but that's where we ended the last episode. So, uh, although Doc wanted to stay, TBD will still save the day. They got rid of the night. Now the glacier's in sight. But who are these guys in their way? That works. <laughs> that absolutely oh, works. Nice. And uh, as I mentioned to the guys before the show, and and a little bit on. Uh, on our messenger back and forth, uh, I'd like to start the show. I mean, you guys kind of, if you guys read the Discord and stuff, you saw some of the stuff that Jacob would have communicated about him and Tika and um, what his life's work has been. Um, but what he wants to know is what in the world is going on in this party as far as leadership and if they were to talk strategy, that kind of stuff. Like, what would, over the course of a 10 day to a 10 day and a half would he have gathered from the party members and as a side note uh, for anybody who is watching or in the podcast you can actually go into our our discord bit.ly slash our fun discord and read everything that genius put in there um i may take some stuff from our side chat genius and throw that in there as well because some of that could be useful information for the uh for the followers mm -hmm. as well just some backstory <laughs> yes Yes, it could. So, so if, if the kid's looking for information on leadership, Crixus would say, well, I think if you ask Karanon, he might say he leads this band, but in truth, Karanon follows his whim. And uh, right now, Valine and I are providing the direction. So, I don't believe we have what you would call a formal leader, but I'm as close as it comes. Oh. <laughs> I guess, I mean, Aranon would not argue leadership. Um... I think the only thing he would say in regards to leadership is that it is kind of done by by quorum, by group decision, not necessarily one person saying, all right, pick up, let's go. You know, it's usually, well, we should do this or we should do that. Or I, I, would, I would actually throw in there that Crixus is the actual voice of reason. Okay. Where Aranon is more not selfish, yes, selfish, but more self interest. Valine would tell you the glue that kept this group together was left back at the inn, and that she's kind of nervous about it falling apart because neither Doc nor Ellie <laughs> are along anymore. <laughs> And that at times Crixus and Aranon can bump heads. And either Doc or Ellie seem to be the one to talk that situation through between the three of them. So she's a little mm -hmm. nervous. So Jacob might have his work cut out for him to make sure this goes smoothly as his uh, desire would be. Um, and then would there be any uh, talk of strategy? Like if we come upon dangers is there like how do we you know how do we do this i mean i think you'd figure out quickly valine is a spellcaster yeah she said I, I, she i won't run into anything um i mainly do necrotic damage and resurrect things well not resurrect but unnaturally rebirth things aranon would say she's a witch birder she's a witch she's not a witch she's a wife <laughs> After what I heard, I'm not even sure I want to be that anymore. Crixus <laughs> says uh, he's getting 
much better at guiding his bolt right into the uh, the enemies. So um, until I think, you, I think you broke him. <laughs> until that, I whip out my hand axe and I I do my best at uh, trying to get those enemies to piss me off and activate my rebuke. Oh my god, guiding his bolt. I'm never going to look at that spell the same way again. <laughs> so, all this happens. Ernan's made of ice and he's uh, looks like he could do some hand-to-hand -hand combat, but he also looks fragile. Uh, Valene says he's not as fragile as he appears to be. He's been good and capable and hasn't lost much of himself yet in this form. Okay, yeah, I think Jacob's kind of looking to see is is it is it a desire for him to stay ranged or get up in melee? Because um, he's much more uh, comfortable in in uh, ranged situations, um, but he will get up in there if he needs to. So. Obviously, you, he knows you lost the doc, which was definitely a upfront melee fighter. So he's wondering if that's the role he is intended for him to fill, or if he's pot shotting from a distance. I think if, if we play it well, we can uh, make it work. The only problem is, I don't know. Can you heal? Because Crixus seems to be our only healer, and if he's off away from us fighting people. Could be problematic. I I do have the ability to to cure some wounds. Oh, so maybe that was the way we go. Send Crixus to the front to heal himself and just keep himself up. You keep us up back here, and pot shot when you can. Sounds good. And right. I think that catches up catches us up to. Yeah, so the next day, <laughs> so the next day, <laughs> you see the Reggae Glacier in the distance, and you see 12 humanoids walking in a line across the snow towards you guys. And the one, one about mid-ish of the group hails you, waves his hand, and yells something that's unintelligible over the wind as they approach. But he looks like he's friendly, he's not drawing weapons, none of them are. They're rushing towards you. Aranon would hold his hand up like, kind of like a we come in peace. Hail. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, no, no. Um, as they approach, uh, they get to about 20 feet or so away and he steps forward. Uh, you realize it's a he at this point. Steps forward out in the middle. And, uh, says, Hail, travelers. I have a message. Um, I have seen you before. I, uh, I had a premonition, a vision of your arrival at the glacier here. That is a tigers, a group of tigers with ice in their veins have come to spill your blood in the snow and make sure that you don't uncover what the Frost Maiden has kept hidden. We wish to accompany you, if you will allow us, to the glacier. My name is Menyer. This is my warband from the Elk Tribe. Menyer, just so we are clear... It is not your intent to stand in our way if we are trying to find the things we need to to stop Oral and her wicked magic. 
We do not wish to stand in your way at all. In fact, we wish to protect you from this threat that I have had a vision of. Indeed. That is, if you are willing to accept our help. Crixus is going to look at Vali, and he is... He, he's going to say, sounds like a pretty good deal with his face. And I'm going to be interested in her feedback. She's more familiar with the stories of the glacier, whether it's going to be more valuable to have more people or not. Um, you pull her off to the side for this conversation? I don't. I'm, I'm don't. doing it with my face. Oh, I'm okay. Saying, like, I'm looking at her, and basically my face is like, I would be apt to add them unless you would have a reason not to. Hmm? She, yeah, let's see what she couldn't get a read on them specifically. Uh, she she kind of takes a deep breath and sighs and looks at you um, and just kind of nods gently. Um, her read on the group isn't strong, but she she sees your inclination and thinks, yeah, maybe. I mean, someone offering to help. And I don't know how much you believe in premonitions, but... <laughs> or visions. Do any of us have a um, idea of the intentions of the uh, elk tribe from conversations we've had in Ten Towns as far as do we know if the tribes are generally good, bad, indifferent? Uh, what you know, Jacob, from your time in the Ten Towns area is that the tribes are are, are a whole gamut of things. You got tribes that are just complete dickheads and then ones that are, uh, for lack of a better term, very, very um, cordial, nice, um, fluffy. <laughs> Uh, so that's a word you and yeah, fluffy. Exactly. I use the word. Um, so your, I mean, like your inclination is based on your history and where you're from. Trusting strangers is difficult. <laughs> um, you probably don't actually trust these guys. Re um, regardless of the fact that there has been no inkling of anything that would make you not trust them. Okay, I got my eye on them. Valine can't get a real good read on him either, so she's just deferring to Crixus in this instance, and um, has always kind of trusted in the minimal... Uh, time they've been together, his judge of character. <laughs> Crixus is going to look at Aranon and say, it's up to all of Icewind to to stop Oral. I'll take any help I can get. And waiting for waiting for him, waiting for Aranon really to acknowledge he agrees with allowing them to, to come with. Aranon would take a minute not take a minute, but he would kind of take a pause, ass assess them, and just kind of look at Crixus and, and give him the, give him the nod. Kind of weird because he's he's made of ice and his eyes don't move around in his head, so the facial expressions are different. And it's not until he there's a tense moment where he just you kind of wonder if he's actually gonna go along with us, and then you get a a, a nod from him. <laughs> So I'll turn back to the uh, elk tribe and say, we we welcome the opportunity to work with you. Um, but please be warned, it, uh, it is our intention to mix things up quite a bit. And Oral is trying to stop us. So there is danger here. For you. Mm. The Frost Maiden, she is a tricky one. 
We have light again, though. So something is happening. Well, to be fair, sir, we are happening. We brought the light back by destroying Oral's transport to the night sky. Uh, that is why it is dangerous for you to join our band. Well, if you are combating Oral, then you are our charge. We shall take you to the glacier. And he, he turns around and he grabs a um, little whistle next to him and blows a pattern of whistles that kind of echo out in the other following him form up in a formation spreading out further than they are. So we would have had to tell them though that we're headed to I where know where exactly? you're headed. We're all tied to the of... glacier. Yeah, they've had premonitions of Okay. I, I just wasn't sure how detailed their visions were on where we were headed and what we were doing. Can I try to um, memorize the pattern of whistles that he? Yeah, make played? an in, make an intelligence check. Seventeen. Yeah, you actually you you were able to successfully memorize this pitch, tone, length of notes, and the pattern, timing of it. Never know. Never know. Never know. It, it is a thing that could be. Um, so, you move forward. Uh, they have this formation set out in front of you. And you're heading forward to towards the glacier. Uh, they have made a large arc that almost surrounds... They have a couple of people that are actually traveling behind you as you move forward. Towards the uh, towards the glacier. Uh, is the run running order of dog sleds right? We're on dog sleds, right? So, running order is. Um, they are not on dog sleds. So the the sleds, in order to travel with them at this point, you're off the sleds, and the dogs are just kind of pulling through the snow. <clears throat> the wolves are pulling through the snow. And you can't, as you approach, the, the glacier is much larger than you were expecting. And you estimate you're um, maybe an hour out yet from reaching the actual base of it. This thing is massive, reaching into the sky. Think of the wall in uh, Game of Thrones in the north. It's like that. But as you're approaching, there is a spot that comes out of the wall that is very, very bright compared to the rest of the ice. Um, almost like there was air frozen inside of it from a, um, from a running water or something. And it runs to the base from about three quarters up down to the base. You're sitting there looking at that and actually admiring it and maybe even wondering a bit of what it might be. Some of you may recall Valine mentioning a waterfall at one point in your travels that it might have previously been. And you're looking at it and you're looking at it and out of the snow all around the elk tribe pop several other humanoids. If your your first inclination is the um, the cats <laughs> because that was something that hid in the snow and then just kind of jumped out at you. But then you realize that all these are humanoid um, people, and you can see various uh, adornments and stuff, uh, furs, and uh, it's another tribe that has started attacking. They're trying to seal Team 6 us. Yeah, and they, they so, came out, come out of the uh, snow. 
question for uh, I had sent uh, inventory that Jacob had. I had some stuff. I don't know if you had looked at that. If you were fine with it, oh sure. One of the yeah. things that he has, that I gave him, was the longbow of warning, mm -hmm. um, which I think just means uh, companions within thirty feet of me can't be surprised except if they're incapacitated. So mm -hmm. I don't know if that at all plays into anything. I don't know if um, everyone's with this within 30 feet anyway or if there is a surprise everyone with you within your range within 30 feet of you no one's surprised it didn't seem like many of the uh many of the elk tribe were surprised either they were very much on guard the whole time there was a tense moment before these this other tribe jumped up out of the snow where they seemed to slow down and take a few steps but uh menier uh, the one that jumped up near him, he started con uh, started fighting him and took like two swipes at him and kicked him back into the snow. And then he turned back at you and said, we'll fight them. Run to the glacier. Run. What would you like to do? Aaron, I wouldn't argue. I mean, that's not our fight. Our, our battle somewhere else. I'd mush. Mush. <laughs> yeah, you jump on the sleds and everyone jump on a sled and go from oh, yeah. walking alongside the dogs to jumping on the sleds. Mm -hmm. Okay, I need dexterity or actually animal handling checks ah. from you guys as you break the line where the fighting is happening. There seems to be more of these, uh, more of this tribe than the elk tribe fighting. I got a 14. 10. 18. 18. Uh, let me give me, give me a one for Feline here quick. Yep. Okay. So you all jump on the dog sleds. Mosh, the dire wolves heave. And you're, you're all moving. Uh, Crixus, you're first. You're right out. They responded, took off right through them. And, uh, as you go through, they a couple of guys swing at you as you break the ranks, and not, none come close to hitting you. Ernan, you're through easily. And Valine, uh, Jacob, as you get through, the one swings at you. I need a dexterity saving throw. Dogs aren't listening very well. They got a little close to the combat, and there's an AO here. 16. 16. Um, would a, just out of curiosity, nope, a five would not hit you. Um, I know Jacob's AC is better than five. So <laughs> you dodge out of the way of this ax that comes swinging over the top of your head and kind of kick the, um, wolves into mush more and you're pulled in it about, how long, well, how much time do you take before you decide to either look back or slow down or? Um, as, as soon as we're out, I would, I would have Tika drop on our trail to prevent, uh, anything from following us. Mm -hmm. And I would, I would just say defend from well, the command. Tika drops on the trail and there's a, there's a roar from her behind you guys on the trail. Um. There are several arrows lobbed at you and uh, other elements as some of the elk tribe are defeated and some are left behind. Um, but eventually you reach the glacier itself before you stop, or right at the base of it. You kind of turn around and you look back and there is, you can see the carnage, there is this red stain basically on the snow where this fight took place um, you see a few of them standing talking squabbling um, ones on their knees there's some arguing you're not sure which one's which at this distance but there are a few survivors yikes how did, and, uh, how did Tika spyglass how did Tika, there? Uh, Tika got out of there 
relatively quickly. Uh, landing, they didn't move in her direction necessarily. Okay. What was your question, Aranon? Oh, I said Aranon would take out a spyglass and look. Oh, take out your spyglass and look. Uh, you can see Menyer and one other standing over uh, two severely injured members of the tribe that attacked you. As you're watching the what looks to be an argument, one of those two members turns into an owl and flies starts flying away. Um, Menyer takes a shot and misses the owl in the sky with a bow, and it escapes. I would have been narrating the whole thing kind of like a bad, like a bad comedy. <laughs> bad audio show. Mm -hmm. I'd be like, so, dude, dude, just turned into an owl, and other dude that we just met shot at him. <laughs> dude, 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 dude. <laughs> yeah. Dude, where's my owl? Dude, where's my owl? There it goes, there it goes. So you stand before the Reggae Glacier. Um, yeah, I'm on. And... That's not going to get old. It makes me laugh. <laughs> uh, Valine gets out the codicil and begins to read a similar um, thing you've heard before. Crixus actually read this, trying to bring uh, Aaron on back. And she says, We bow to she who wears the crown. Let the world shiver with dread, clad in winter's whitest gown. Her snow enshrouds the dead. Her fury sheds but frozen tears as gray clouds issue forth. Her wind across the wasteland shears, bringing blizzards from the north. And at this point, there's a low rumbling in the ground. Ice-kissed flowers caught mid-bloom, beauty kept in all its grace. Summer's gone, its silent tomb still holding her cold embrace. All the world in winter's white, sheathed in sleet and ice, set upon never-ending night, she conjures paradise. And there's a crack in that weak spot in the waterfall that kind of juts up it and spaces open just a little bit. And it echoes through the uh, kind of cavernous bowl that you guys have come down to the base of this. Behold her everlasting rhyme, see how it covers all. Weep not for those she traps in time behind her glacial wall. Sovereign of summer's lost, of general... General of Winter's War, long live the Queen of Cold and Frost. May she reign forevermore. And at that point, it splits. And I need you all to make a dexterity saving throw as a bunch of snow and ice and crap comes falling down from above. Yikes. 17. Nat 20 for 27. And? 10. Um, I would like to do several backflips out of the way. Hang, hang on one second. <laughs> okay, so uh, Jacob, sensing this and kind of knowing what's going on, sees it. He jumps out of the way, and Tika easily out of the way itself. Aranon, you do a backflip to get out of the way, and then you realize, oh, Crixus and Valim may not make it. And you take a step in there and just like, run, you idiots, and grab them both. And yank them out of the way as the ice falls. Uh, you have about a 20 foot tall pile of ice and snow in front of you. But beyond that, there is a 10 foot wide crack fissure in the glacier leading down into a cavernous tunnel system. Nice 20, bro. All right. Um... Do we have to climb over it or around it? I assume if we climb over, over it. it, we don't take the dogs with us? Correct. Alright. Dogs are going to be hard-pressed to do much of anything in here anyways. 
All right. So we we'll have to put together a makeshift shelter then to protect the dogs from the elements. And Valine is completely for that setting up. Um, uh, what, what can she actually do? I got Ellie's character sheet open. <laughs> we, I mean, we could kind of dig into the side pile of ice a little bit too, kind of move some stuff around and kind of use it as a yep. wall. Make a little igloo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you all dig in, set up some ice, create a makeshift shelter. Um, then, uh, it takes you, actually, all of you make a survival check. We'll see how long this takes us. 19. Dirty 20. Nice. Nice. Also 19. Oh, no, 20. Uh, Valine isn't much help. She's taking um, taking more care of the wolves than anything, just trying to make sure that they're calmed down. But the three of you managed to whip this up in about a half hour. Uh, it's crude, but it will it will function properly to keep them out of the elements should things get crazy while you guys are away. Uh, making... Oh... Having that together, you guys enter. It's difficult terrain. It's probably about, like I said, 20 feet high, 20 feet in. As you enter the cavern, it there is an unsettling... Um, feeling, atmosphere, the whole place just doesn't seem quite right. Mm. The edge, um, there's an edge to all the sounds that it, it echo through the hall. Aranon, you don't pick up on any of this. This, everything seems very normal. Actually, you're pretty comfortable here. Uh, being made of ice and all. Uh, but for Jacob and Valine and Crixus, it is... Have you ever been in a room that's been so silent it makes you question your sanity? You get in that room and it's just like, oh, this is weird. It's like that. Or, or that, that constant noise you always have behind you. Not that this cave is silent, but that feeling of something is missing that's always there. And you kind of have that feeling as you start walking into this cave. Mm. Uh, could one of you roll a d12 for me? Jacob? Sure. <laughs> new guy, go! Yeah. <laughs> Can blame hey, new the guy. new guy. Fiverr. Fiverr. Awesome. You're walking into the cavern. I don't like that you your face, John. Minus Aaron on. Because <laughs> he can't smell anything right now. Because he's got cold vid. <laughs> what? what? You have co cold vid. Because oh. you're frozen. <laughs> it was a dumb joke. <laughs> But you Carry can't on. smell. Because you're made of ice, man. It's the same reason this unsettlingness isn't hitting you. But Crixus and Jacob and Valine, uh, there's a familiar scent to the caves that reminds you of something traumatic in your past. Something that caused you tremendous fear. Crixus, it may be whatever put you in that room where they first met you. It may be the smell of that room and waking up in bonding on your bed. Um, Jacob, it may just be the fact that you realize you don't have a way home. The smell of first, where you first realized, oh shit, I need to get home and I don't have a way there. It may be something sooner. It may be something from your childhood <laughs> uh, that you smell. But it, it's not 
Um, it's not helping your mood at all. Aranon, can you roll me a d6, please? Sounds like we're going to be battling Pennywise. That's not a bad comparison. Dose. Dose. Right. We all float down here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Especially you, you're made of ice. <laughs> yes, I literally float down there. <laughs> you do literally float down here. Um, so, oh my gosh, this map. I forgot about this. I should have given you this and probably actually looked at it first. I think you guys come in at H1, I believe. This map is huge. Yeah, do you want to send um, us do you send me any maps for next week? Yeah, I'll send it to you afterwards <laughs> and show you it. Uh yeah. The um you step in to this first area in here. And the, the cavern kind of opens up, and it's 30 feet high. And in the center of this cavern, there is a massive... Jacob, you recognize this almost instantly. It's, a, it's an airship. It's not... And I, I say massive, but it's, it's massive to them. But it is... It's just it's a sky coach. It, it's it's mm -hmm. a smaller transportation ship to get to the massive ships. Um, the uh, Valine looks at it and oh, that's a Netherese sky coach. Can you get out, um, Professor Scant? <laughs> We've had many talks of these. Crixus will go into his backpack um, with his hand always on top of the backpack itself and then kind of dig his other hand in and pull the orb out securely fastened on the top and the bottom. She... she says or she says professor look ah a sky coach oh it's a pity it isn't working i've always wanted to ride one they've sounded so magical can you imagine being in the sky like a bird truly mysterious crixus will say can it could it be fixed uh, look, look, looking at it, uh, you there is doubt in your mind as you ask that question. Got it. Uh, and he's he says the orb says to you, he goes, oh, even if it could be fixed, you couldn't get it out of this cavern. <laughs> Bless you. <laughs> as Crixus <Krixa> sneezes. <laughs> Thanks. Catching a little of the cold vid. This used to, uh, <laughs> this used to vary people, uh, ferry people to and from the floating city of Yathrin. What would you like to do? I want to search. There's an opening the on the, there's an opening on the other side. Um, yeah, it feels like. Rich people would ferry themselves from place to place. Maybe some lost luggage on that boat. Okay. Uh, go ahead and make an investigation check. I would assist. I, I mean, of course, Aranon would okay. search the shit out of that. You want to go um, ahead? I'll, I'll assist you, Aranon. I think your investigation is um, higher. I'm at plus I have a I have a plus nine for investigation if anybody wants that. Oh, I... <laughs> we'll, we'll assist Jacob. That's you tell the new guy, new guy, go take a look. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I think what would happen is... Oh, man. Maybe you, sh maybe you guys should have anyway. A one and a five for 14. Ouch. So Jacob's climbing up on the wreckage of the ship, and he kind of peers inside. And as he peers inside, what he was standing on the railing, he was standing on snaps off and falls to the ground. And there is suddenly a cackling. Not one voice, but like four different voices cackling in the cavern. Um, you look around and you don't see anything. Uh, Jacob looking inside this ship, um, there are four headless skeletons in different areas of the room. Um, there is a, what appears to be a safe of some sort or a chest, um, with a little dial on it with uh, numbers from zero to 50. Actually, can you read your chronic? <laughs> oh, you're muted. Yes, having a Drake has its perks. I <laughs> yes. can read draconic. It, it is draconic writing. That's how you know it's the numbers zero to 50. Um, you know what's funny is I thought you said, can you read the chronic? <laughs> <laughs> I literally thought you and said that. Chill like, to the next episode. I was like, like tea leaves only better. <laughs> like tea leaves, but only better. <laughs> That's a show title for you. Yeah, I like that one. The cackling dies down after maybe ten seconds or so. It just leaves you with an uneasy feeling. Hmm. A bunch of bodies, no loot, and a safe we don't have numbers for, so. Yeah, I would, um, I'd tell them, tell them what, what I see in there, and, uh, see if anybody's interested in, in, uh, attempting a safe cracking. Actually, um. Did you say safe? While standing in there, I'm gonna... I'm going to cast Detect Magic. You cast Detect Magic. Yeah, there's magic. Is magic. it coming from, coming from the safe? Itself? No, not coming. It's inside the safe. Whatever it is, it's inside the safe. There's two... Um, one mm, slightly larger and one a little bit smaller. Very small, honestly. One about the size of a coin or something, and then one roughly the size of a small dog. Aranon would look over the safe chest, whatever it is, uh, for traps. Uh, and what right. is that for? Investiga investigation. Ooh, nine. Do you think it's trapped? Oh. Aaron, um, would, while he's I looking, I would step back and oh, go ahead. I was gonna say while he's looking at that, and I've got detect magic up, I kind of give a little walk around on the around the airship and see if anything else lights up. Uh, how what is the range on detect magic? Thirty. Thirty feet. Thirty feet. As you get up, kind of higher in the ship, you actually see, um, like you get a couple of spots in the sky about the size of a skull floating around mm. in the air. What's the chest? Yeah, level? that. What's what? What's the chest made of? Chest is made of... It's a safe. It is made of... Oh... Do, 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 iron. Shit. Fairly heavy, too. If you grab the one end and try and lift it up, you guess it's about 200 pounds. Because I was hoping... If actually, it actually you, have a, you have like an 8 strength, don't you? Me? Yeah. In your strength eight. 
A minus two? It's a minus one. It's a minus yeah, one? Minus, or, yeah, yeah, it's minus an one. eight. Yeah. It's a minus one. Yeah. So you grab the one end of it and you heave and you're like, yeah, that's that's heavy. You aren't going to carry that out yourself. Aaron or drag I, it out. Because of the, the magic in it, Aaron would attempt cautiously to to pick the lock or open it up without triggering anything. He would be super extra cautious. Okay. So be super extra cautious and make a lock picking check. I, I do have the professor out yet. Um, see if he provides any feedback on, on any uh, traps or anything like that around here. Oh, that's not trapped at all. <laughs> Aaron, you you super extra cautiously are picking the lock on this um, chest, and as you're, you're you're in there and you're got both your tools in there, and there's you've got it pried in behind the dial. You're going in there, and there's a click, and you think for a minute you set the trap off, and then you pull on the door and pull the door completely open. The inside is lined with uh, red felt. Um, and there are, there's a brown leather satchel looking bag in there and four uh, amethysts just kind of scattered on the bottom along with a ring. Uh, you stop Actually, make an intelligence check on their the visual on this ring. Seventeen. Seventeen. Yep. You reach down, you grab the ring. Um, you know, though, no one else should be holding this ring because it is clearly made of charlatan. Similar to the uh, dragon that you pilfered before that caused you some madness. Um, the amethyst you estimate are worth 100 gold apiece. Four of them. Uh, Jacob, the ring that Aranon picked up is magical. And the bag is magical as well. Okay, yeah, I'll come back down and let them know that there seems to be floating things that are magical that maybe I'm thinking he's putting together that maybe the laughing he heard was the missing heads that are flying around. Be a safe deduction. Aranon would pick up the magic magical bag and open it up. Uh, you pick up the magical bag and you open it up. It seems to like you put your hand in there and it just seems to go in forever. You don't feel a bottom to it. Mm-mm. Who you had the bag of holding, Aaron? Mm hmm. Yeah, yes. this is another, but you realize very quickly this is another bag of holding as you put oh. your hand in there. Nice. At least that's what you assume it is. I would show it to everybody and say, this appears to be another bag of holding. Uh, unless somebody has a different idea. Who needs it? Who wants it? New guy. Sure, I can carry stuff for you. Let's say, do you need a bag of holding, Jacob? I, I don't need consider, one, but consider it part day. of your payment. Take I get home with you when you find your way home. I would toss it over to him. Okay. Toss a bag to your Drake Warden. <laughs> I was waiting yeah, for that, that, that uh, didn't work. <laughs> Waiting for him to say I'll stuff it in my bag of holding and getting ready to scream. <laughs> oh, that would have been fun. We've done that I even, before. I don't even know if Tom knows what would happen if we did that. I have no idea. Oh, yeah, that would it would might have been the end of the campaign. <laughs> it would have been a new campaign somewhere yeah, if you, far, far away. Tom, just so you're aware, if you put an extra dimensional space inside an extra dimensional space, you create a rift in the void or a tear in reality, basically, and it annihilates everything within, like, I think, 60 feet. 
It happens, man. It, like sucks it to the astral plane or something. Yep. That would have been fun. Yeah. Been. yeah. And very, everything very John had planned would have been right out the window. Oh no, we'd just be starting a new campaign next week. That's all. Oh. <laughs> and may maybe maybe it would be you're all from Eberron and you're going looking for Jacob. <laughs> Ooh, cat's out of the bag where you're from. Sorry, dude. <laughs> I don't know. We think... said that last... we said Did we that say last that last time? Okay. I didn't get my egg rolls. <laughs> I'm going. You didn't get your egg rolls. <laughs> that's a callback. Oh, that's a week. throwback to last week. Show titles are fun. Yeah. Uh, um, gate to the astral plane. Any creature within 10 feet is sucked through to a random location and then it closes its one way. Gross. So leading off of this cavern, there is a trail to the right and left. And then there's a 20-foot drop into another cavern directly ahead of you. Jacob, you don't notice the, the magic coming from above anymore. Whatever those four entities are, they've moved on. What would you like to do? Left, right, or center? <laughs> it's a fun game. It is. Left is always right. Left is, Left always, is always right. right. So you go to the, down the middle? <laughs> <laughs> I'll leave it up to the leader. Confusing, but sounds like... <laughs> <laughs> roll, roll left, 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 right, center to determine who the leader is. <laughs> Sounds right. Like the party. Let's, I don't have uh, dice let's go to the left, which is the center. Is it... Which one are you doing? Left, right, or center? Yeah. You're, you're left. Uh, it quickly um, dead ends into a cavern about 15 feet tall and there is a cackling as a skull wreathed in flame comes flying down towards you guys i need you to roll initiative oh, of course of course bro Let me go ahead and go last on this All one. Right. Advantage gives me a 21. 16. Uh, let's see. Jacob. That's weird. Jacob. Aaron Crixus? Is that what it is? Mm-hmm. Aaron Crixus. Maybe it leans in there somewhere. Yep. She should be. Let's throw. Let's see. Where's Valine? Yeah, but she's at the very back end with the net one. <laughs> Interesting. I thought my three was bad. <laughs> um, so this skull comes down, and the first thing it is going to do is it is going to... Um, it drops down into range. Oh, yeah, that's right. I don't have a dice. I got to use these dice. And it is going to, out of its eyes, shoot a ray of fire like Superman um, at Aranon. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you're going to be vulnerable to this. So you're it's going to tw tw twice as much damage. So hope to hell you dodge this. Uh, does a 16 hit you? Uh, that is my AC. That oh. hits you. Ooh, boy. Um, let's see. Let me pull this up. I'm gonna, we're going to double this, by the way. Because you're trying vulnerable to uncannily to dodge this. Yeah. Uh, it's a total of 24 damage. Are you going to uncanny dodge? <laughs> That's your sweet ass. I'm going to uncanny dodge. <laughs> so it's 12 damage. 12 fire damage. Uh, that moves us to Jacob. You see this thing come down and fire beam eyes at Aranon. All right. Uh, uh, I, so how it's, it's 
how close, how high, like it. Actually, I need to back us up. He gets to do that twice. <laughs> Sorry. Cool. Cool. We didn't get into your turn necessarily, so. That's fine. <laughs> the second time is a nat 20. Oh. On who? <laughs> Ernon. Two Fuck. years of attacking. Fuck you. And I wasted my uncanny dodge on the first one. So it's 14. Doubled. Double then doubled. Doubled then doubled. So 28, 56. I'm dead. You're unconscious, at least. Uh, he... mm. Oh. Uh huh. Um, <laughs> the uh. I am now. A uh, puddle. I am a puddle of mud. <laughs> throwing back to pre-show. <laughs> going back to pre-show, puddle of mud. Yeah, you are. I you are right literally. Now, I'm, I'm you a are of mud. melted I'm drunk down. And I'm, I'm yelling at the lighting guy. You are. Tom, I love you. Thank you. That's amazing. I do what I can. Uh, oh. So, you come rolling down. Um, the 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 eye beams melt you from the top. Like, you see it hit his head and just roll down. And his whole body just steams out into this puddle in the ground and seeps into the cavern below. Um, that moves us to Jacob's turn. Jacob, you watch as this person that you decided to come and help has melted away into nothing. And behind you, you hear the rustling of feathers And then just one simple word uttered. Fuck. And that's where we're going to end. Um, <laughs> I, I don't think a fuck it's going to help Scoon Jack. <laughs> <I don't, laughs> Sco Scoon Jack said get a bucket. <laughs> uh -huh. I actually said someone grab a bucket. Someone right. grab a bucket. Let's put Aaron on in the bucket. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, my first snowman. question was going to be, is there is there anything left to cure wounds on? But No, he was ice. That was yeah. fire. Grab a rag, new guy. <laughs> <laughs> so come up in a towel quick. Well, I'm hoping he wasn't the leader. <laughs> wow. Um, yeah. That was well, that thing. escalated quickly. <laughs> I was going to let, uh, well, it's, there was part of me going, do I go back and make that second attack now that I realize that? I'm like, yes, I would let my player go back if, because I hadn't gone on. I'm like, you didn't actually do anything. I'm like, I noticed it. Got to call it. Go back to it. And then it's the nat 20. I'm like, really? <laughs> well, a series of unfortunate events. Yeah, so come back next week and find out who Tom's going to play. <laughs> <laughs> There's been a hint here already. Uh-huh. There's been so, what the The fuck? party keeps changing. Wow. Take a bumpy, the new guy. No, he won't be. <laughs> He's been around for a ten day and a half. Yeah. Holy okay. crap, I was not I did not expect that to show up like that. No. No. Mm. Yay! <laughs> Oh boy. Alright. Rest in peace, Aaron. Enjoy beers with Betty White. Yep, I'm gonna oh too soon. I'm gonna have to pour one out for, for Aaron later tonight. While watching the Packer game. I did not mean to kill you. <laughs> it's not my intention. I'm let's be honest, I'm made of ice. I'm surprised I I made it this far. <laughs> you got this far, uh, yeah. Yeah. That's true. Campfires, torch. He tries to smoke weed and his face melts off. Like, shit could happen. Mm. 
in that puddle of cause... in that puddle of water, you actually see um, like some of that ale as well. <laughs> the <laughs> ale goatee, <laughs> your Yellow beard melted snow. in there. Yeah. Jesus. Oh, and all of his stuff is laying on the ground, or at least all of his magical stuff is yeah. laying on the ground. Yeah, there's gonna, hey, that bag of holding. <laughs> I'll put it in the. No, I won't. <laughs> the bag of holding. <laughs> Just gonna end up with one anyway. <laughs> yeah, we can go over all that stuff. What's yeah, you're gonna there? have to. That's true. Yeah. Again. And on that note, I'd like to thank everybody for popping in for this magical moment. <laughs> <laughs> this magic moment. What? What is it? Uh, one shining moment. Are we gonna go back and do like the one the March moment Madness? in time? Yeah. <laughs> March Madness, you know, recap of everything. <laughs> yeah. Everything that happened to Aaron on in the beginning and on the way. And, uh, <laughs> Cue the trying montage. To, trying to dive through a window with the window being shut. Yep, yep. All my follies. Seemed to me he lived his life like a candle in the wind. <laughs> <laughs> Not really. The no. candle ended up killing him in the end. Yeah. <laughs> Stupid cat laser eyes. Laser cats. Yeah. Everyone deserves a warm meal. Wow. Skulls yeah. with laser beams. Freaking yeah, lasers. Skulls with freaking laser beams attached to their heads. All right. On that this note. This may be the first time I've actually killed someone and they don't have a way back. Like unintentionally kill someone and they didn't have a way back. I mean, technically, I, like I think I'd still have a way back if we had like one of those ice ice molds, like a uh, like <laughs> an ice mold, like a whiskey cube or a whiskey yeah. ball. Uh -huh. Put Aaron on in the ice mold. <laughs> There's a lot <laughs> you just, of ice around. You'll, you'll be this tall now. <laughs> be gnome sized. We'll chisel out a new Aaron, and then we just have to figure out how to give life to it. Put his hat on him. Yeah, we could have just avoided this whole thing by giving them boots of bread bags, so then there's like... <laughs> Whoa. Oh, it's sad the younger generation won't know what that means. Welcome Fantastic. to growing up in Wisconsin in the 80s or before. Yep, yeah, boots of bread bags. Oh my god, I want to make that a magical item now. They really should It'd be. be so niche, so niche. Oh, but uh, it it would basically be some cool. some character where his he dresses the way his mom used to dress him. So he'd have like moon boots with bread bags in yep. them, and yep, mm -hmm. exactly. Oh my god, mittens, that's mittens hilarious. with uh, glove attachments that goes to his oh, jacket. Yep, yep. <laughs> Little ties so that when you pull them off, they hang there. Uh huh. <laughs> All right, you're nice. gonna come across. The, you're gonna come across a kid in in your thrin that's gonna be dressed like that. That's gonna be great. All right, uh, time to close the show. John's gotta leave. So I, I do. Note, we are two nerds one quest. We are here every <clears throat> every Sunday morning, eight thirty a.m. Central Time or earlier, based on John attempting to leave us. Yeah, yeah, we'll get through it sooner or later. My daughter will be able to drive herself sooner or later to work. Yeah, but uh, the joys of having... We're that far from it, honestly. Um, yeah, we are here every uh, Sunday morning, 8.30 a.m. Central Time. Happy New Year 2022 to everybody. Hope you had a great and safe Christmas and New Year's. Um, Safer than Aaronon's. Yes, Aaronon did, <laughs> did not survive the New Year. Uh, you can follow us, uh, twitch.tv slash Tom Norm. Go to bit.ly slash our fun discord to find all of our links for our Twitters and our videos and our YouTubes and all that fun stuff. Um, support us. Tell others about the show. Give us some ratings and reviews wherever you get your podcast from. Podcast goes out Monday mornings at 730-ish, if I remember, because I forgot one one time. Ah, uh, yes. Yes, you did. But uh, tell others. Let other people know that we exist. Uh, we enjoy having people in the chat. We love having everybody interact with us. Um if you're in the chat, vote on some show titles. I threw a link in the chat there. Go to tommmnorm.showbot.tv. We have some great titles this week. We had a lot of we had a lot of fun chat. God, who the, the hell started. said I have a bolt, Greg? Can you guide me? A plant <laughs> lamp. That was, that was a plant lamp. I, I died laughing at that moment. <laughs> yep, that's a pure plant lamp uh, submission. Uh, oh so, my god. Uh, 
for a genius, for Crixus, aka Cooch, and for the murdering, low down, skeezy DMJC. May you burn it's the in dice, hell. man. It's the dice. We'll catch you next week. <laughs> Do you mean melt in hell? Melt in hell. <laughs>
<laughs> you have, it's gonna. You have a backup character. We're gonna end up I'm going like, back to the the bar, and it's gonna be like uh, Spaceballs, where they have the stunt doubles, and they're all dressed <laughs> like the main characters, and it's gonna be like <laughs> it's gonna be Jacob and my next character, and then whoever replaces Crixus, they're gonna show up to the bar like it's no big deal. <laughs> These are dumb. <laughs> that's not Valine, that's Maureen. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> yeah, Ellie will be the only one left. I mean, at at some oh, point you're probably not wrong. I think if we I, I think if we killed off Jacob, Ellie would end up jumping off the roof of something because that would be both of the loves of her life gone. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if, if you would have uh, thrown that bag of holding in the bag of holding without a second thought, you and I, I think we're the only ones within 10 feet of it, so we'd have been gone. Crixus gone. and Valine going, now what? Slowly back away, and I guess I'm done. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm gonna have to put together a backup character, someone we'd find in the uh, in Yathrin or something. It seems very dangerous, very dangerous path we've taken. Uh, yeah, clearly this is not for the faint of heart. And I think I actually need to level up that other character because we leveled it once or twice since I created it. Can't wait. Fortunately, we'll see. We'll see what happens. I, I'm not quite I'm not quite sure how I want his personality to be yet, so Well you've got between now and yeah. next week to look in a mirror and test out your voice and Maybe inflection. he'll be German, yeah. Maybe maybe he <laughs> shall be the German. And I get to talk like this for the rest of our campaign com oh, uh, campaign. Campaign. Oh boy. I'm, I'm, my vote's for Canadian Uber or, uh, you know, the, the Fargo. That would be. <laughs> yeah, oh I'm, uh... Although, t try talking with a lisp for an entire episode. That's fun. <laughs> this, this is, uh, no, I can't do that. Is it Germans? Yeah, my uh, Wednesday night character had a hat. He was, like, the dumbest character, so he got a hat that made him smarter, but it also had some drawbacks that you rolled daily and most of the time it was talks with a lisp Ugh. so that was fun then i was doing limericks with a lisp <laughs> there once was a man from seattle saskatchewan saskatchewan <laughs> i don't know man we'll see uh, my character may may change uh I mean, the character itself is is staying, but I, his name and his How demeanor and stuff it? may change several times in the next yeah. seven days. Because that's why writing the writing the backstory is usually how I figure out personality. Like, what would he have done? Who would he have traveled with? Who would he have met? Where would he have come from? Why is he here? Okay, was he his, doing that's, that? That's all sussed out already. I already have that taken care of. Cool. Can't yeah. wait to meet the guy or girl. It's a guy. Well, actually, I can't. I. I'll, I'll have to. The jury's out. I'll have to get a consensus on whether it's there is such a thing. Think about it. Think about it. And if you'd rather play a fairy or a rabbit, there's you know two people who were just we left at a bar that could have caught up with us. This sounded adorable. That rabbit's scary as fuck. Yeah, we still have to finish that one shot. Yeah, we really do. I, I really want to know if I escape or if I get eaten by zombies. <sighs> if we can sit for a little bit and do some, uh, use up our hit dice, we, you know, we've got a better chance, but we're sitting there with nothing. I mean, do we have hit dice? Yeah, yeah. Hit dice is like a resting thing, so. Okay, that's not a. It's okay. not, a, not a physical item. 
But I think we're only are we only level three or four or something, so we only can get so much back. But yeah, we're not. I think we had a collective ten hit points, but and we're carrying around a unconscious body, also. Also true. Yeah, that lady better wake her ass up. <sighs> wake your ass up. Well, let's see if anybody's online right now that we can go raid. All right, chat. thanks again in the chat, guys. Happy New Year. 2022 is going to kick ass. Yeah, go pack. And Ryan, I'll see you Wednesday, yes? Yeah, you got it, bud. Yeah, I'm, on, I'm not going to be working for uh, Monday, Tuesday. I'm out of town on a business trip. And then I'll be back by Wednesday before. So, be good. Does anybody can, in chat have anybody you want to read that's online? There's nobody on my list that's... Uh... That's live. That's the downfall of doing a Sunday morning stream is that every once in a while we'll get a, a Dunaway streaming or a uh, uh, there's one or two other people that sometimes stream, but nobody nobody that I want to throw us to. All right, dudes. Have a great Sunday. Go Pack Go. All right. Thank you. All right, see you. Closing down the stream. See you, dudes.